ananas, papaya, Okay, so here is a really cool plant. This is in the pea family, and this is called the sensitive plant because when you touch it, when you touch it, the leaves curl up like that. How cool is that? Hey, what's up guys? So I'm at the swamp right now. Uh, I'm at my other work, Cash Bayou Outfitters, and there's all kinds of cool flowers blooming and stuff and cool mushrooms and I just want to show you all that right now. So this tree used to be a sweet gum tree. That was, the bark was eaten by beavers and then mushrooms kind of attacked it and, and it died. So we cut it down. But if you look around here, there's all kinds of cool fungi. Uh, so this one's dried up right now, but when it rains, this is that uh, violet tooth polypore. So like the edges of it get all purple and stuff when it rains a lot. Um, here's, I think, okay, so I think this is this one called a green cheese polypore, or like a stinky green cheese, a rotten cheese, something like that, mushroom. Okay, so that's what it looks like when it's real little. And there's another one over here, and that's what it looks like when it gets big. And it just like keeps evolving. It's so cool. Oh, OMG. And there's another, uh, where is it? Oh, there it is. Another slime mold. Who doesn't love a good slime mold? Okay, so out on the dock, we got this cool flower. Oh, we got a pollinator in there. You can see him. Uh, this plant is called rose mallow or swamp hibiscus. This is an actual uh, native hibiscus plant in Illinois. Usually when you think of hibiscus plants, they're like very tropical plants. Um, but yeah, this one lives in Illinois. And these are actually in the cotton family. And the, the, the stems of this plant have really, really strong, long fibers. So they are great at making ropes. You can split apart all the fibers and then weave them together and then make a rope, which is awesome. Moving over here, we have this plant it is called uh, powdery thalia or alligator flag. Kind of looks like an alligator tail, I guess. I don't know. And it's called powdery because the, the outsides of this are all super powdery. And they're really cool. Oh, is someone coming? Oh, no. Okay. So this is a super rare plant in Illinois. Usually you find this in like tropics and like Florida and stuff. And it's a really common plant for gardens. Uh, way, way down south in like tropical areas. But a botanist in Illinois, around this area, he found this plant in a ditch one day. And he's like, oh, MG, is that really that plant? And so he brought it over to the Cache River Wetland Center and they propagated and made a bunch of them and spread everywhere. And we took one of those plants and brought it here. And so hopefully it's gonna start taking over some of the banks and be a cool native flower. Okay, so this plant kind of looks the same as the other one. Uh, the leaves do, at least. But this is called water hyacinth. And it's got cool, cool purple leaves. Or purple flowers, I should say. It's got green leaves. Um, and then another one of my favorites, Sclepius incarnata. This is swamp milkweed. Love this plant. Okay, so just leaving, just leaving the house this morning. And I walk outside. And... Look, look at this, look at this. So, all of those birds up there, over there, all over here. I counted like 26 of them. They are all American crows. And those of you who don't know, a group of crows is called a murder. 
So there is literally a murder of crows outside my house this morning. And I'm only a little slightly concerned. Okay. No idea what we just found, but some kind of crustacean with some big, big old pinchers. Oh, yeah, dragonfly. I just saw a hummingbird over there. And then check this out. I just spotted him. Or maybe her. I don't know. It's a green tree frog. Hey there. How you doing, buddy? Bye-bye. Oh, just kidding. Oh my god, there's two. One right there, and the other one jumped over there. Oh, cool. So, this is a walking stick. One of the coolest, best camouflage insects we have around here. Look at that. So, I'm pretty sure they're pretty close related to praying mantises. It got some of like a similar shaped body, but yeah, and look, it just looks like a stick. If I just took a picture of this and showed it to you, you would have no idea that there's an insect right there. I mean, like if you look real close, you can tell it's a different color, but like, nah, you got no idea. That's so crazy. And like, look at its face. It doesn't even have a face. It looks so much more like a stick than an insect. Where'd it go? I don't know. Oh, there it is. banana spider right here i just picked him up and he decided that my shoulder was the best place to be but look at that it's a big old spider and they only you only see him in the fall i don't know why but it's like home banana spiders they probably have a better name but yeah super cool hey guys so back at the swamp 
and it is a beautiful fall day, October 2nd. I can hear the wood ducks. Ah, oh, this is so much fun. Okay, so this is, uh, fall is a really exciting time at the swamp because these bald cypress trees, they're trying to show off kind of what their namesake's from. So bald cypress trees are called bald cypress because they lose their needles in the winter. Most pine trees are like evergreens. They stay green all year round. Not the bald cypress trees. They lose all their needles and become, become completely bald, just like the regular trees that lose their leaves. Um, but it's weird because only three other trees do this. They're uh, conifer trees. So yeah, you can kind of see that they're starting to get some like orangish colors. And that's from this one compound called a tannin, which also makes the, the, the water so brown too. Those tannins get leached into the water and make it kind of that tea color. Um, and these cypress trees are actually in the redwood family. So those really, really huge, the biggest trees in North America. Some of the biggest, oh, gunshot. It's duck hunting season. Oh, it's getting close. Maybe they're just practicing. But, yeah, so, uh, I lost my train of thought. So yeah, this, uh, these wetlands right here are such a great place for ducks. Especially the wood ducks, because they got all this, and there's water, and there's always a good place to nest. Because the wood ducks, they like nest in trees and bushes. Most ducks just like nest in the ground, and they'll find anywhere. But the wood ducks, they're kind of specific in what they like. And this is a great place for the wood ducks. Yeah, just look at that. Okay, so I'm at our little cabin at the swamp. And I just noticed over here, Mark found a beaver skull. Oh my gosh. Okay, so see how big those teeth are? And it's got this orange color. That means they're filled with iron. It's so really, really hard. And they continuously grow their whole life. So that just keeps on growing their whole life. They cut on cutting down trees and it gets marked down. And then they chew them with, chew the bark with these teeth. Chop it down, chew it up. Chop it down, chew it up. Chop it down, chew it up. Yes. Oh, oh my gosh. <clears throat> <clears throat> Haven't talked at all today. Um, but okay, uh, so back at the swamp. And well, I'm actually, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of not actually at the swamp right now, but I'm part of the, the wildlife refuge, it's part of the swamp. Anyways, what I wanted to bring up was, now that it's fall and all these leaves are changing colors, um, now is a really cool time to tell different kinds of plants because, you know, different plants turn different colors. In the middle of summer, it's, it's like a hard tell. It's like, just, everything's green. Everything's green. I don't know. It's green stuff. Green stuff everywhere. But now that it's fall and things are turning colors, it's like a little, oh, oh, we got different varieties here and there. And you can kind of, just by like looking at the color, you can tell different kinds of plants. So this is my favorites. So we got, yeah, oh, and then just, this is like sea of, of red, reddish, brownish right here. Lovely. Uh, this is all poison ivy. So yeah, as you can see, we got our leaves of three and our thumbs. And yeah, all poison ivy there. So. If you just randomly walk into the woods and weren't paying attention, middle of summer, you'd be like, oh, whatever, I'll just walk through it. But now, you can tell. That's poison ivy. Well, you should, you should probably learn how to tell anyways, because you don't want to get poison ivy on you. But, oh, fun fact about poison ivy, too, is that as the planet gets warmer and there's more CO2 in the air, then the poison ivy is getting stronger, which is kind of crazy. And if you think, oh, I'm not, I'm not allergic to poison ivy. I don't, I don't get it ever. The more you get exposed to it, the more likely you are to have a severe reaction to it. So don't touch poison ivy. Okay. That's interesting. As I was just making that whole hub blue about, well, we know what color it is, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm looking around and this is all poison ivy and it's all just different colors right now. So what's up with that? I don't know. So here we got mostly green with a little bit of yellow poison ivy over there we got mostly yellows here we got more of like a like a reddish yellowish orangish and then over there we got the red so yeah i don't know maybe still look 
<laughs> oh my gosh oh my gosh i saw this really cool mushroom i don't know what it is but it is beautiful look at this thing it's like purple it looks like a clam it's, there's a couple more over here like what is this this is so pretty i love it okay guys i just can't look how look how pretty this is you see all the cypress trees are turning orange. They're losing their leaves for the year. Oh, if you can hear that, ooh, ooh, ooh. That's these ducks called wood ducks. Oh, and the crows are going crazy over there too.